Rededjet also read it as Rutade, is the name of a fictitious ancient Egyptian woman appearing as the heroic character in a story told in the legendary Westcar Papyrus. She is said to have fulfilled a prophecy by giving birth to three future kings that was forecast during the reign of Khufu fourth dynasty by a magician named Dedi. Topic. Literary person Rededjet appears only in the fifth story of the Westcar Papyrus. No archaeological or historical evidence of her existence has been discovered. Nevertheless, she is object of great interest for historians and Egyptologists, since her story gives information about the line of succession at the very beginning of the fifth dynasty and two royal women. Topic. The Wonder of Rededjet According to the Westcar Papyrus, Rededjet has a strong labor, and birth is difficult because she has to deliver triplets. The god Ra, lord of Sashebu, says to the deities Isis, Nephthys, Mesknet, Hecate, and Kanum, may you all go to Rededjet and release her from her trinity of children which are still in her womb and which will exercise their splendid office in the whole realm one day. So they can build temples for you, take care of your offering tables, let your drink plates thrive and multiply your god's sacrifices. And so the goddesses turned to Rededjet's house after they had transformed themselves into music-making dancers. Kanum turns into a porter. When they reach Rededjet's house they meet her husband, Ra User, outside at the threshold, wearing his skirt upside down and whining. The goddesses show him their menets and sistrums. Thereupon Ra User says, See, there is a woman here who is suffering badly, for her birth is problematic. The goddesses say, May thou cause that we can see her. See, we know how to relieve, Ra User replies, Feeds. The deities step in and go immediately to Rededjet, who is lying upstairs. They seal the room and then Isis stands before Rededjet, to catch the babies, Nephthys takes position behind, whilst Hecate accelerates the birth. Now Isis says, may you, the one who is user re-ef, be not too strong in her womb. And the baby comes out quickly, a healthy child of one cubit in size. His bones are solid, his equipment of limbs being like gold. His headdress is made of real lapis lazuli. After cutting the umbilical cord, purifying the baby and placing it in a brick-made bed, covered with soft sheets, Kanum makes the body strong. Mesknet steps by and says, this is a king who will exercise the rulership over the whole country. After this, Isis stands again before Rededjet and says, may you, whose name is Sahor, stop kicking in her womb. And this baby, too, comes out quickly. It has the same extraordinary appearance as the baby before. And again Mesknet blesses the child with the words, This is a king who will exercise the rulership over the whole country. A third and last time Isis stands before Rededjet and says, May you, whose name is Kaku, stop being blind in her womb. And the third baby is blessed by Mesknet, too. Now the deities leave the room, meet Ra User and say, O oh joy! Three children were born to you. Ra User replies, My ladies. What could I do for you? Give this barley to your porter, may you accept it as a gratuity, for making some beer. Kanum shoulders the jars of barley and the deities start turning home. On their way, Isis admonishes her companions with the words, Haven't we come here for a good reason? What would that reason be, if we perform no miracle to these children? There were nothing we could tell to their father who made us come, the deities create three lordly crowns for the children and hide them in the jars of barley. Then they conjure a downpour, as a reason to turn back to Ra User's house. They say to Ra User, please store the barley in a sealed storeroom for us until we come back from making music in the north. 
and the jars with barley are locked in a storeroom. Some weeks later, Reed Edjet asks her maidservant, Is our house prepared with all good things? The maidservant answers, It is prepared with every good thing, except some jars of beer. They were not brought yet. Reed Edjet inquires, Why is this not so, that the jars with beer were brought? And the maidservant says, There is nothing you could produce it with, except the barley of those musicians, the barley that is stored and sealed away. Reed Edjet orders, go and take some, Ra user will replace it when he comes home. And the maidservant opens the storeroom and all of a sudden she hears music, celebrations, and cheering from afar, its festive mood typical for a royal enthroning feast. The maid is baffled and tells everything to Reed Edjet. Reed Edjet enters the room too and also hears the festive noises. Now nosy she puts her ears on every box and jar, until she finds that the noises are coming from the jars of the musicians. Recognizing the situation, Reed Edjet tells everything to Ra user and they both spend the rest of the day celebrating. One day Reed Edjet is bickering with the maidservant, who is punished with beating. Infuriated, the maidservant says, is it because of that? Is it really because of the three kings you gave birth to? I will go to file charges with the king of Lower and Upper Egypt, Khufu, justified. The maidservant leaves the house and goes to her elder brother. He is sitting beside his mother, binding flax and yarn. When he sees his sister, he says, Where do ye go to, Lil, sister? And the maidservant tells him what she is up to. The brother says, Shall it truly be done to come to me just to make me sup with betrayal? He becomes angry and beats her, too. The maidservant now goes away to get some water and a crocodile snatches her. The brother goes to Rededjet to tell her what happened. Rededjet sits on the threshold, crying. The brother says, What are you crying about, mistress? Rededjet answers, It's about this little girl that grew up in this house. Look, she went to go to file charges to the king. And the brother replies, See, she came to me to tell that I would go with her, but I beat her and sent her away. When she went off for some water a crocodile snatched her. Topic. Modern analysis Historians and Egyptologists such as Adolf Ehrman and Kurt Heinrich Sethe once thought the tales of the Westcar papyrus were mere folklore, despite their knowledge of the historical correctness about the beginning of the Fifth Dynasty by describing the succession of the kings Userkaf, Sahor, and Nefrirkar. They also thought the novel of the Westcar papyrus to be unfinished. Modern Egyptologists such as Verena Lepper and Miriam Lichtheim deny this view and they argue that Setha and Ehrman may have just failed to see the profundity of the novel. They both evaluate the story as some kind of narrated moral that deals with the theme of justice and what happens to traitors. Leper points out that the story of Rededjet might have been inspired by the historical figure of Kentkaus I, who lived and may have ruled at the end of the Fourth Dynasty. Kentkaus I is demonstrably entitled as Mother of Two Kings, and for a long time it has been thought that she may have borne Userkaf and Sahor. New evidence shows that at least Sahor had a different mother Neferheteps. The implication of the Westcar papyrus that the first three kings of the fifth dynasty had been siblings, therefore seems incorrect. Since in the Westcar papyrus Rededjet was concerned with the role of a future king's mother, the parallels between the biographies of the two ladies aroused special attention. The role of the maidservant is evaluated as being a key figure for a modern phrasing of indoctrinations about morality and betrayal. The maidservant wants to betray her mistress and is punished by destiny. Destiny is depicted here as a crocodile who snatches the traitor. 
The objective of the tale is to ensure the beginning of a new dynasty and by making the only danger disappear, the author of the Westcar Papyrus artfully creates some kind of happy ending. Leper sees a strong clue in the way the story is finalized that the novel of the Westcar Papyrus ends here. The episode in which the crocodile snatches a traitor, is repeated several times, just as a refrain, which is a typical writing element used in ancient Egyptian documents to close a chapter or text. Topic. Archaeological basis In 2009 archaeological discoveries in Abusir, the royal necropolis of the 5th dynasty, have established that Nefriarkar was in fact Sahor's son, who was Userkaf's son. Egyptologists now believe that the story of Rededjet is based on a conflation of two historical royal women named Kentkaus. The first one, Kentkaus I, lived during the 4th dynasty and may have given birth to two kings, while the second one, Kentkaus II, was the mother of two 5th dynasty kings, Neferefer and Nyuser Ini. The supposition is that when Nyuser Ini was on the throne, he revived the cult of the Kentkaus I, as the similarities between both women provided him with a genealogical link relating him to his 4th dynasty forebears. Egyptologist John Nolan believes that the mirroring position of the character in the story and association with the two royal women was emphasized so that Nyuser Ini could legitimatize his rule after the troubled times surrounding Nefrefer's death. It could identify him with a third king inserted into what should become a legendary tale of prophecy, although that did not correlate with the historical records of each woman. 